Well, welcome to Daring Don Shu Art. Uh, glad to see you back. Um, so if you followed the video before this, um, I sketched this eye, um, you, you know, using the best process I know how. Um, so basically just to, to communicate what's going on is I'm communicating this to you as I'm learning it. And, you know, so the idea is that, you know, I'm trying to solidify all these techniques and then sharing with you as I'm going along, um, as opposed to, you know, at some later date when, um, you know, I'm proficient at this already, then going back and making a tutorial. Um, I think a lot of times we pay attention to some more details when we're actually doing stuff that we might forget um, as we master certain skills. Um, and then also there are gonna be certain ways I do this that aren't gonna be probably the best. So definitely looking forward to any feedback you could share um, if you are more experienced and have some, some better tips and things like I, I can do it better. But basically I'm showing the best way I know how at this moment based on what I've seen, uh, you know, from, from others who are, who are ahead of me in the game. I'm just trying to learn what I can from those who are more experienced and sharing it along with my community. Um, all right, so the sketch is there, and now you, what you'll see is you see these reference photos. So I found these reference photos from Google, and um, so what we're going to do today is we're looking to make um, a convincingly painted eye, right? So we're moving to the painting stage, and the idea is to get it to be convincing. We're not going for hyper-realistic, and part of the thinking behind that is that um, you know, as I'm in a learning stage, I don't want to get too, too bogged down in making, trying to make things too, too perfect because, you know, none of the stuff that I'm doing at this point is really for the purpose of, you know, posting to the cover of a magazine or the cover of some game art or a film, um, illustration or anything like that. So it's for the purpose of learning and, you know, in order to learn, um, for me, the fastest way that I learn is to do things over and over and over again. So rather than try to go for, for like perfection in one go, I'd rather kind of like solidify the steps and the workflow of getting there. And then, you know, once I get that workflow down and repeat that, it just, you know, hopefully I can get it to become sort of a muscle memory thing. So where some of the steps that I'm going to kind of go through, I, I might be able to skip later on once I've done this, you know, a hundred times then I can probably start to uh, pull back on some of the, the, the way I approach it, which is maybe a little bit, I'm sure some people would see it as overkill the way I've got this laid out, but let's just get into it. Um, so, so over here, uh, the way I've got my layers set up, uh, I have them named and the reason I have them kind of laid out with names is it helps kind of keep my workflow organized for me at, at the stage um, that I am, that I don't have this all trained into my head yet, right? So by me having these named layers, it lets me know what I need to do. So for example, I've got the skin layer, the sketch here uh, of the eyelids is there. And then a little bit lower down, you'll see I've got the sketch of the iris, right? And then I've got the layers that I need to paint um, kind of where they need to be layer wise. And then um, I'll try to follow that as much as I can. And, um, I'm going to try to keep this real time, um, which is why I'm going for a convincing eye, not hyper realistic, because I'm sure hyper realistic would take me, you know, like uh, a longer time, but I'm going to try to keep this, uh, to, to 20 minutes, uh, if at all possible. If I do need to speed it up at some points, uh, if it takes me longer, which it might, um, then I'll do that. But the idea is to try to keep as much of the process kind of real time so you can see see what I do. I know people tend to like real time, um, real time videos. Okay. So real quick, let's talk about the brush. So, um, I, for painting, for sketching, as you saw, I was using, uh, Steve Zahn, ultimate Steve on brush. And that's what I use for, um, for the act. That's what I used for the sketch. But now that I'm in the painting mode, um, I'm going to Ahmed Adori's uh, brushes that he's created. Ahmed Adori is just amazing uh, as, as an, a digital painting artist. And so he's got a number of brushes that he made available on Gumroad. Um, and so the one I'm going to pick 
is this hard round 1021. Um, and a number of tutorials that I've followed use, are using similar brushes or talk about brushes that are for digital, that painterly style, you wanna have like a hard brush. Um, for many beginners, you could go with a soft round, but I'm gonna try to kind of just more so go with the painterly approach. And I'm sure that that'll make life a little more challenging for me, but it is the way that they say it's recommended. So I'd rather just go ahead and, and learn it that way. All right, so that's that's one thing. So that's the brush, which is which is always a very important thing. Um, and then, so like, so here, there's there's the brush. And so what I like about the brush is, if you notice, it it automatically has, you know, sort of like, it does this overlapping opacity. And so because it does that, it's going to allow me to sort of blend a little bit better. So I'm going to spend one one minute and talk about blending before, uh, before I go into this. So, uh, let's just delete this real quick here. All right. So, all right, this is real quick about blending and I'm not an expert on blending, but I'm just going to tell you what I, what I've learned about it so far. So for example, if you wanted to blend color, um, so let's, let's pick this color here and paint. Let's paint. Right? So that's that color there that we just painted. And then we pick like, for example, a lighter color and then we paint that. Right. So actually what we want to do is paint them towards each other. Right? So let's let's paint these towards each other. And what we do, you overlap. Right, and then what you can do is you color pick in the overlap. Uh, let me think here. Is that right? Yeah, I color pick in the overlap. Oh yeah, so I overlap with that, and then I color pick that thing, and then I can go backwards that way, right? And then I color pick that thing, which is a little bit, a little darker, and I go back the other way something like that, right? And then I color pick like in there and I go back the other way. So you see what it's doing? Because the way the brush um, is it's made to kind of have an opacity and overlap, what it does is if you overlap two colors and you pick in the middle with the color picker, which is I'm using the short, sh shortcut key alt to get that color picker, right? And then you, you pick you pick that overlap color. That overlap color is going to be a mix. See how it's a little bit lighter than the other, but it's it's darker than that. So if I just kind of uh, keep picking and then overlapping, uh, I can get it to blend. And obviously, that wasn't like a really perfect blend, um, but that's just that is, I believe, the approach that I've seen people using uh, to do it. Okay, so. All right, so as so let's time to move here. Let's let's do this. So I'm going to first things first. I'm just going to get rid of this figure layer because I don't need it anymore. Um, and I'm going to start on the skin layer, which is underneath my sketch eyelids. And the, the skin complexion I'm going to kind of go for is a bit of an olive. So what I do is I'm just going to pick a middle, a middle ground of what I'm going for. Let's say, let's say there, let's say that's a middle ground. And I'm going to use bracket up to make my brush bigger. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to cover the background with that mid ground color. Right? So this just gives me a base to start with. So everything is, is colored in that. And I'll go over it a couple times just so that it's uh, fully the color since the brush I'm using is, you know, it's an opacity brush. So it's not going to let everything through right away. All right, so and actually, I think this skin layer should actually be under the eyes. Yeah, I want, I want the skin layer to be under everything. All right, so that's my skin layer that goes under everything. And then the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm just, this is, this is something I'm doing now because of the stage that I'm in is I'm just going to be color picking 
and we're gonna make the brush a little bit smaller. I'm gonna be just color picking uh, from these photos, right? Now, more experienced artists won't need the photos to color pick because they'll just be able to go to the color wheel and pick from the wheel. But as a beginner, um, the recommendation is that it's helpful to, to use photo reference and color pick from that as it, as it then helps me to learn kind of how the colors are going, right? So I'm just going to get a little bit of, uh, a little bit in there and I'm on my, I'm on my skin layer, but actually I'm going to go ahead and go to my skin two layer at this point. And, um, and all I'm going to do is kind of like block in this color where I see that it's, it's darker, right? So I know that going around the eye, it's going to be a little bit darker there, right? And I'm not going to be exact, right? I'm just being, um, kind of, kind of quick about this and, you know, it kind of, fades off to there and then just got some shadow going down there or whatever so that gives me that and then what I notice is I'm going to grab some of this this her highlight color here and I'm going to make my brush just a little smaller and I'm just going to get some color to be in there right, I like that color there and I'm going to use some of that color underneath here so what I'm doing is I've got three photo references and I'm not really trying to copy any of those references, but what I'm trying to essentially do is just use the references as a way of understanding kind of where, um, where the colors are. So that's going to be, that's a much lighter color. So, so just going down to the cheek is going there. And you know, like kind of, you know, that we don't have any eyebrows in there, but just, just giving the idea that that's going to be, that's going to kind of be in that area there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, now that I've got just, just some blotches of color, which I know I can actually fade or fix a little bit later if I want to. So for example, here, I can see that that's a place that I can blend. So make my brush just a bit smaller, right? And I'm just kind of blending that. See how that just kind of blended that in there? And then, you know, anywhere that it looks like it's, um, anywhere it looks like it's uh, too harsh of a line, I can just, just pick the overlap and the generally the overlap is right in between, right? So you see how I pick that? See this line right here is really sharp. I can just kind of zoom in there and I'll pick a happy medium, which is right in there. It kind of overlaps. Oop, I think I picked the dark one. So just go there on the overlap and boom. See, so you see how it's, it's a blend between the two. So that's allowing me to find, to find that, that match between the two. That's where I was meant to talking about with the blending earlier. Right. And so, like I said, I, I'm not going to get too, see like there, let's pick this one here. There we go. So like, see how now I'm smoothing all that out a little bit. Right. And I could, I could continue to work that. But like I said, we're going for a convincing eye, not like a perfectly uh, rendered digital photo here. Um, I do want to blend this area here. So there we go. So yeah, just pick right in the middle. And, and it kind of gives me, it gives me a, just pick like a there, for example, right? And it just gives me something that's in between the two, like that, like, bam, you know, like that, right? So you can get like obsessive with that and, and spend like hours doing that. Um, but let's go quickly through what all the parts are. So I've got that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, get this, these lines above the little eyelid crease. I'm going to get that blocked in with a dark color. So I'm going to pick a dark color from in there. And you notice it's within the red space because skin 
um, has got this thing called subsurface scattering, which is, and actually now I'm switching to a different layer. So now I want to go above the sketch because I, I laid down these two, the two skins, which were to me underneath the sketch, kind of like just laying out the, down the base color. And then the next step for me is going to be uh, laying in this darker, this darker uh, crease here, right? So I'm starting a little bit wide, right? And then I'm going to actually get smaller and keep the same color, but get my brush to be uh, smaller. And I'm just going to paint right on this. And so now because my skin layer is above my sketch, I can actually just get right on top of the lines and oh. <laughs> you just knocked over the stand part of it. Luckily it's on a table, so it just kind of fell onto the table, but I'm just going to forget about the stand for right now. Okay. Let's get the brush a little bit smaller. See there? And just, just, I can just paint right over the, um, right over the um, those lines that are there and so what I want to do is kind of take every every line or every area of that crease that's kind of within that that dark space and just kind of kind of get those in there and then I can do the color picker and just go just a little bit lighter just to get those in there and then underneath I'm going to get these, these little skin creases here. You know, they're not going to be super dark, but they're just kind of giving us an indicator that the skin has some kind of a, all right. So I'm just looking at the reference photos, like the one on this one here. I noticed that these crease lines are within the lighter, a little bit of the lighter range, right? And I'm just getting those in there and then just kind of going over wherever I see the sketch and I'm sure it wouldn't hurt to blend some of that in there so that it's, you know, not necessarily like an exact color. You see what it's doing. It just kind of blends that in and because it's like a little bit lighter then it's already starting to make that, give me that feeling of, you know, of a crease. And what I can actually do is, is go back on the swatch to the darker version. And now that I'm really small, I'm just going to make another kind of. And once again, I'm using the brackets to get me the, the size change. So I'm going really smaller on the line to get that crease to be sharper. Right. And then, you know, color pick the overlay again. Get the brush just a little bit bigger and come out right and i'm blending that crease out because you know it's just a it's just a thing of like as as the eye comes towards us to give that sense of depth let's get the brush a little bit bigger let's color pick uh something that's in the middle again let's get the brush much bigger than that yeah so you see the brush getting bigger and then we blend that out some more. Okay. And then, like I said, it's, it's just, so what I want to do another blend because, because I don't want that to get too all to be dark. I want it. I want to, I want you to get the idea that the eyes coming out. So I want it to be getting darker towards that crease. Okay. So I like that lighter color. So I am going to use some of that lighter color just underneath here. Because I do see, you see this whole area just tends to be, let's get this bigger. And let's take a little bit lighter of a blend. Let's pick that light blend right there, yeah. So there we go. So we're just going over, right? So my crease lines, they're still there, but they're a little bit less visible, which is great because I don't want them to be, you know, she's, she's probably going to, she's probably a female person. So I want it to still be, give me the idea that, um, that she's, you know, feminine and not like super wrinkly, right? 
And plus she's wearing, like all these characters are wearing makeup. And so they've already kind of blended out some of their own creases, um, which is the purpose of the makeup. All right, so so that gives us the idea of those those eyelids in there. Now let's move to the inside of the eyelids. Um, so for that, let me go to another layer. And the reason I'm going to all these layers is because that's just a confidence thing, right? I, I, I've seen um, people who are, you know, more skilled getting in there and, and doing it a lot faster. So um, on one layer, right? They're not necessarily all switching to multiple layers. So I'm going to use my color picker again. So what I'm looking at here is this little meat part that I kind of see going across the top and then there's the mascara. So I'm going to start with the red meat part first and then come back for the mascara. So I'm going to grab that, that dark meat and then we'll see, see how it's in the red space right there. So what I, what I love about the color picker is like, you know, your eye is not going to be as effective at knowing what colors it's seeing. So you, you color pick that. And then I'm gonna use that red with a smaller brush. And, I, and you'll notice I'm gonna use the same brush throughout this whole, throughout this whole thing. All right, and what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna go, I think that size is pretty good. I want that to be a little more red. I think a little pinker. I'm just gonna make it a little pinker just for my visual aspect of it. There we go, that's what I like. And then make that smaller. All right? And I'm just painting right over the lines here. So at this point I should not see these edge lines anymore because I'm gonna just gonna paint over them. And it's great because the sketch is helping me know with confidence where to paint because I know what I was intending to paint there. And this is that inside meat. Um, you know, this is that inside meat of the, the ledge of the eye. And I'm just gonna start it off as this kind of reddish color. And then we can... Um, the reason I have these references here too are so close by is it kind of like I keep kind of looking at them to see kind of what's really going on. And you know, they're different, the different references remind me that, you know, it might be a little different on each of them. I'm gonna paint that in there cause I know I'm probably gonna end up going over it, but I'm, I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna go in and go for the lighter color. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick, pick, take this, uh, Take that flesh meat right there. No, let's take that lighter. Let's take that lighter flesh meat and I'm just gonna paint that in. So you see that? Bam, we just paint that in, right? The brush naturally has a tendency to wanna blend it, so that's great. And then uh, I can pick up a, 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 a middle color. Let's see, let's pick. Let's pick a blend color there, right? And so that blends that, that blends that into there. Well, let's pick a color from here. Great. And just kind of get that in there. And I want to go back to that darker color. Right. Blend that in, make my brush a little smaller again. Blend that in there, right at the edge. Then let's go a little bit lighter. So let's see if we find a blend color. Go a little smaller on the brush. And let's just keep picking blend colors. It's too bright. That's too bright. Let's get a nice. A little darker. There we go. 
So you're just picking, you're picking right around there until you find like the one that's, that's a little bit lighter than what you need there. And, and then going for that. All right. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna, oh, I didn't want that to happen. Wait, close. Go away. All right, so I am going to pick, let's see, what, what, is, what does the eye do right there on the inside part? Well, there's a bit of shadow, so I'm just gonna pick from there and use that as the, the bottom. I'm just gonna, because what it's doing, it's, it's like it's blending into the shadow a bit, so I'm fine with that, so I'm just gonna have that kind of it be there and and then I want to pick so underneath on the ledge I see that there's a bit of a lighter color and I want that lighter color to be represented right so let's just paint that in you know as we go into the corner with that that should be good and to be honest, I'm probably already getting more detailed than I should be getting for the purpose of just locking down a workflow. Um, and I'll keep that in shadow. So that's, I'm fine with that being in shadow, but I don't like that it's so black. So what I'll do is I'm going to zoom and I'm going to once again pick a blend color right there in the middle. See, see how it runs into the red? So I can pick that blend color and then start painting that. And then I get a color that's a little bit less, less of this kind of black, right? And then just blend that in. See, so that looks a little bit more, you know, blended into the, into the pink of the flesh meat, right? So, um, so yeah, so I'm switching colors quite a bit and then, and, and like blending it in. So this is this here, you just, just blend that in, you know, just kind of blend that in. And then you can go to the swatches to go right back to one you just had. So go back there, get that in there. So I think I'm good with that. Um, without getting too, too caught up into that detail, I think that that's going to do what I need to do for right now. And so I noticed that they each have, so lighting wise, um, in my sketch, I kind of indicated there would be like a light reflection coming from the uh, left of this person's eye or right of my screen and this this eye here the one in the middle is the closest to that um, and then I have another reflection which is as if there's a little light coming from over on the other side so I can kind of mix and match just a little bit and I'll be fine um, you know to get that um, but what I'm going to do here before I go any further I just want to blend this crease just a little bit better right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to take some of some her colors, take some of her colors and just kind of blend that, blend that in there a bit, right? And then let's just, so that's a kind of a reddish feel, right? So it's just giving us a, a more fleshy reddish feel right around there. And then and what I'm going to do too is. I'm going to pick, I'm actually just going to pick like a darker color from right in there. Right? And I'm going to go kind of small. I just want to make sure my crease is a little bit better to find. Okay. And then I'm going to pick a color that's sort of in between. And I'm going to go a little bit bigger. Just, just to show that this, let's go bigger than that. Just to show that this outside part goes out right just to get that feel but see it comes out kind of fast right because it's a the, the crease in on the inside slopes in a little bit more but the crease on the outside comes out pretty fast so that's where I'm gonna pick a, a between color one more time and then go back over that so that it's you know it gets it gets to the to the lighter thing faster because the more it gets to the lighter part of it Whoa, what happened? Okay, the more it gets to the lighter part of it, um, 
that that's kind of hinting at us that it's coming out of there. And once again, I want one more blend and a tiny bit of a smaller brush. I want another blend here. And another blend. Yeah, and I want to get one more grade of, of it coming out. So that does does come kind of come out. And then once again, just to reinforce the the line, I'm going to pick the line. And on the color wheel, I'm just going to manually make that a little darker. I'm going to manually make it darker and make my brush way smaller. There we go. Because what I want to do is I just want to reinforce the crease part of it. And I want to make that brush probably even smaller. Yeah. There we go. Okay. All right. Um... I'm pretty sure I could probably blend that better. Okay, wait, oh, one more thing I wanna do, cause I see, cause I want my highlight to be in there a bit. So um, I'm gonna color pick this lighter thing here, make the brush much bigger. And I'm just gonna go in here. Cause as we said, the light's coming from the right side, right? So we'll just kind of put that in there. Okay, so that's our, you know, that's getting our idea that the light's coming from that right side. And then, you know, I mean, I could throw some of that in there too, just to, to kind of emphasize that. Cause we know that this, this part of the, the face is going to be a little bit brighter. Okay, great. All right. Now I'm just going to take a good look at what I've got. All right. So I've got an upper eyelid. I do need some highlight right here cause that's where that's reflecting, right? So I'm just going to, I'm just looking at where, you know, these highlights are supposed to be reflecting. And let's see. And then making sure I kind of got that identified. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Um, I probably could take some red from here and spread, spread the red. Right, so that shows that that part's a little bit more in the shadow. Okay. And then, then just take some of this deeper pink, spread that around a little bit. All right, so now I've got this black line that's coming from the eyelash. So before I get into the reason I waited to do the eyelashes on this video is that the eyelashes, they kind of go over the painting. So I didn't want to sketch the eyelashes in just to paint over them because they, they're not really helpful that way. So to have that. But what I can do on the painting level is I can take a, a deeper color and then just give, give the line of where they're going to be so that it serves as a reference on the eyelid part. So right here. And I want a thinner, let's get a thinner brush. So I'm just using the left bracket to make that smaller. Um, I am going to use the eye picker to pick that color that she had. Interesting, it's kind of coming from a purple perspective. Okay, that should work. And let's make it much smaller. There we go. So it's almost like it's a charcoal thing that's going on right here. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to stay on top of this, this one, because you know, when she applies her mascara, she's applying it on the top of that ledge, not on the inside of it. I mean, they try to get on the inside of it, but essentially it's starting on the outside and it's trying to get across the top, but the flesh right next to the eyes, she wouldn't really touch that. So I'm just gonna to go to about here with that. Right, and I'm just gonna leave that tag, that little whip as a as a guideline for where to put it, but I don't, I'm not putting that yet, so. And then there, that's the line that she, you can see, if you look at that, you can see her mascara is on the outside, and then there's still some flesh on the inside. So I'll just use the color picker again, and then kind of reestablish some of my, my fleshy part here. Okay, so the fleshy part is still in there, so that's good. And I've got the flesh on the bottom. I'm gonna have eyelids going over that that's gonna come out of that. Um, 
I've got some of my shading showing my lighting. So I'm in general pretty happy with that. Let me turn off my sketch. Yeah, so as you can see, if I turn off my sketch, it, at this point it doesn't really make a difference to the skin part of it. So I'm gonna call this part of it relatively done for now. Um, like I said, you can get more detailed with this and go for hyper-realistic, but um, that's not really my purpose. My purpose is kind of, my purpose is just kind of establish this workflow. I mean, if I really wanted to get detailed, the things I would do to get it even better would be, I would probably work this line underneath to be less, I probably will just do that just because I'm anal you know, like that. So let's, um, so let's just, what we're going to do here is we're just going to cross this line a few times here so that it's not like a clean so if you notice how the crease lines are going right it's not a clean let me pick a lighter lighter shade yeah and go across go across go across so what i've seen some other people do is is like have that line and then do some cross hatching and essentially when you're doing that you're just you're just breaking it up in the direction of the wrinkles so the impression of that line is there and I need to be switching colors for sure. It gets a bit lighter. And yeah, so to be honest, I'm fine with that because it's, it, it doesn't need to be that well of a defined line. And, you know, as I get into a more of a detailed phase, I could actually mess with that a little bit more. But I think for what we're doing, we've got the idea that there's a subtle grade there. So I'm, I'm, I'm just fine with that. Um, and then highlight wise. All right, so let's go on to the inside of the eye now, okay? Because our skin is pretty solid and you can always go back and, you know, get into it and detail it even more. But for now, let's get into the eye part. So the way I've got... So I've got these things labeled on the side. It really helps keep me focused because, you know, me as a as a newer artist, you know, I, I you know, it, it just saves me a lot of time not to have to think too hard about where um, what I'm supposed to be doing. I can just look at my layer and be like, oh yeah, yeah, let me work on that layer or whatever. So, okay, so let's make our brush bigger again. We I just did a color pick from this one, and I'm gonna get onto this white section. And then the beauty of me having these layers, which is why Photoshop is so fun to use for doing art, is now I can just, I can just wash that white in there, right? And it's never a complete white. As you can see, it's sort of in the blue spectrum. I just picked it from that. If I were to pick this white from any of these pictures here, so let's pick her white, for example. It looks white to me, but guess what? It's, it's close, but it's, it's still in that blue spectrum that blue space. So I can use some of that. Why not? So that gives, that's going to give us a little bit of a brighter white, right? And then let's just see what her, her white's going to be a lot darker. You can already see that. But let's just pick, right? So hers is in a more yellow space. So actually, why not? Let's just throw some, actually let's throw some of her white there at the edges, right? And then, so it's already giving some subtle, subtle changes there. And let's make the brush a little bit bigger. And let's pick her white again. Let's pick her white. And then just, and then just paint that over the middle. And well, why I'm doing that is because I, I already kind of know that, um, you know, the eye is gonna have to have some shadow towards the edges. So, and I do have a layer that I'm gonna use for shadowing, but Whoa. Oh, let's go back to her white real quick. And just paint that over. Right. So what I'm doing is just giving the idea that this eye is a three-dimensional thing. And then when I go over with the shadow layer, uh, I'll do that even more. So I like to have two different whites in the, in the iris um, to do that. Um, I did not see that anywhere on any of the tutorials, but I mean, they do put the shadows there. So, I mean, it's just, I, mean, I think it's just something you can just do and, you know, somebody hates on, hates on you for it or it looks stupid in the end and you can always change it. So, um, so let's, let's keep going. 
And so now what we're going to do is, uh, so we've got the eye whites in there. So let's go ahead and get our iris in. So I did the eye white underneath the sketch layer so I wouldn't lose the sketch of the iris, right? So now that I'm on the iris, um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch up a little bit and I'm going to make sure I save as well. So I've got reference photos that I pulled in. Um, I feel like I should always be looking at reference while I'm drawing. Um, and that'll probably never change, no matter how good I get at this. Um, I think it's always good to have reference because you're always seeing and learning things, paying attention to new things and learning new things as you're looking at them. So as you can see, if you look at an iris, it re there's a really a lot going on in an iris. And so what I'm going to do for this is, you know, is as I'm going to, and these are all kind of brown. So what I'm going to do though is take this dark color. I'm just going to color pick it and I'm just going to paint it under there. I'm going to paint it right over, paint it right over the sketch here. And I'm not going to paint it full yet. As I'm going to go into the pupil layer, I'm going to select this really deep black that's in the pupil and paint that in there. Right? So there's our pupil. Super easy. I mean, this is like so fun to do because it's just there's nothing hard about that. And then, so I want to, the reason I painted all that brown in the iris as a base is because then, as you can see, the outer edges of the iris, and actually what I'm going to do now is make my brush a bit smaller and go sample, go sample that outer, outer edge again, but sample like here or something, right? just to get the, the variations in color. And... I'm going to make that outer edge, you know, have, you know, there's that deep shadow as you can see on the outer edge, right? So, you know, let's go grab some of that. Let's go grab some deep colors and just paint those in there, right? So we're going to start this thing off. I'm going to keep going until I get my sketch to be gone. I want my sketch to be gone. What well, it doesn't matter. See, look, I can go over here. It doesn't really matter because my skin is actually above the iris layer as it is in real life. And I'm pretty sure I've gone way over 20 minutes on this recording, but it is what it is. I'll speed up parts of this or something like that just so that it you don't have to watch it all. Um, so as you can see there, so I've got that, that iris later kind of painted in. I don't even think it's super important that, um, I think it's not important at all that it be exact because, um, as you can see, there's so many colors. So what we're going to do, and we're going to do this all in one layer. We could do it on multiple layers, but I think I'm just going to go for it being on multiple layers. So I'm going to just take colors from this, right? And I'm just going to look at what I kind of see. So what I'm going to do, see these valleys and stuff going on, and I don't have to be super exact about them, but, and then now, because I have that brown underneath, what we're doing is, instead of having painted the light color and having to paint all the brown in, the brown just kind of fills in wherever I don't paint, right? So let's go sample another color. Right. And then, oh, let's make the brush a different size, like smaller. And then let's let's paint that in. So you see, you can barely see what I'm painting, but, and I can paint right into the pupil. It won't matter because the pupil's above the layer that I'm painting on. So I can just go right in there and it's going to work, right? So see, it's, it's getting those variations, right? So let's pick a bit of a lighter color, a lighter color of brown. Let's pick that orangish bright thing that's going on. Let's keep the brush nice and small. And now let's just, let's just do that. Let's just make these lines. 
just make these lines going like this. And see, so by me stacking these different layers, it's starting to have a three-dimensional feel to it, which I'm liking. I like how it looks like it's like, you know, some of these things are like stacked on each other. Like, I mean, this almost looks like terrain in some like extraterrestrial planet. You know what I mean? Like I'm on the foreign planet or something. So I've kind of got that going on, but now what I want is more of the wavy, right? Cause it's like, there's a, there's some ridges and everything. So I think for the ridges, I'm going to try to go super light. So that's a bit of a lighter color there, which is great. And I'm just going to put, put that in the middle here. Right, just put those kind of in the middle but don't go all the way back right so that gives it that gives it more of a right and then what I could do is I could go dark again I'm gonna go dark again right to get these canyons so I'm just gonna draw in some canyons I mean and this is not even gonna be like super exact but I'm just gonna kind of like what I'm doing is I'm looking where I did the little wavy stuff and then in the middle of some of those I'm putting putting in these canyons, right? So that's what makes it really look like 3D. It looks like I've got like a 3D, see there? It's like, it makes it look like I've got these canyons. And I mean, I don't know anybody who's been, who's like that detailed into looking at these, that they're gonna be like, well, no, that canyon shouldn't have been there because geometrically or biologically that wasn't there. But you see how that me, by me getting in the light lines first and then getting in the dark lines, Right now, all of a sudden, it's starting to look like a 3D thing going on, right? So it looking, it's looking pretty 3D. Right? If I look at my reference and I look at at the pictures, um, you know, I'm not I'm not that too crazy far off. And so what I could do, let's take like a weird crazy orange from this picture, though. Right, and, and it's fine because because eyes really have that craziness. And let's make the the brush smaller again. So now we're down to nine, nine pixels on this brush. And I'm just literally just putting these in kind of, and I'm using my little light lines as a guide to try to put them in sort of next to the light lines, just so that it looks like I have another extra variation going on, right? So some variation is going on in there. Um, I'm trying to avoid my canyons, but it's not really working. Just trying to avoid my canyons. I don't want to take out the canyons because the canyons are what giving it that depth, that contrasting depth. But the orange is giving it that life, you know, that, that a lot's going on. And what these things are that you're seeing is, um, let me not make sure I don't get this wrong, but like, I believe that these are muscles. So these are very fine specified muscles within the eye that close that contract and expand in order to allow light into that hole. And I don't even know for sure if that hole's really black or if it's just that it's an empty space that, you know, once the light goes in there, it just disappears. Um, I need to probably study a little bit of that to find out what's going on there. But the point of it is, is, um, all these little things around there are the muscles and what I'm going to do is one last thing is because I see th there is light. So I do want one extra light. Let's pick that and let's just go super light. And now that I'm on that really small brush, let's just, let's just add some streaks of light. Right? And that's going to, that's going to add some to depth. Is anything that has like a lot of light highlights and then dark lights are it's going to have depth, right? So let's just add in that right there. Okay. So I, I think I'm fine with this for right now. Like I said, I went overboard um, considering what I said I was going to do. We're, we're just trying to get this to be, we're just trying to get this to be a convincing eye. It's not meant to be like a completely anatomically uh, perfectly correct eye. So I, I'm going to back out of this now before I get too crazy on this. Um, the only thing that I might do is on the outside of the eye, you know, it's not a perfectly sharp line, right? So what I am going to do is on this iris layer, which is the one we're on, I'm going to pick a darker color, pick a darker brown, 
this outside brown here. And I am just going to get a bigger brush and I'm just going to go around this edge just a bit here because I don't want this edge to be so sharp. Right, the edge is not really sharp. So there we go. So that, that's good. That, that created me a little bit of a buffer there where the edge is not that necessarily that sharp. And I can see those muscles going on. I'm really happy with that. All right, so let's, let's save. Let's save at every major milestone. And then let's turn off our iris reference and go back to our eyes. All right, eye reference off, and let's go back to our, so yeah, I'm actually good with that eye. It's, it's a little bit lighter brown than the eyes that I'm working on, uh, and that's probably because of the reference that I use, but I'm comfortable with that. Like, I'm comfortable with it being, um, if I wanted to, to make it seem like it was browner, then what I would do is I would go in and I would just... I would go into my iris layer, which is where I am. I would pick, let's take like a brown here, for example, or let's take her brown because I have enough light browns. So, so that's a nice deep dark. That's pretty dark. And all I'm going to do with that is make my brush a little bigger and just I'm just gonna so what I'm doing I'm not doing the whole thing I'm not covering like a whole swath of, of stuff I just just going over it with a couple of lines every once in a while and so what that did was it just makes you see a little bit more a little bit browner so now it's a browner color it's a little bit darker than, than what it was because I had a lot of light strokes going on in there. And it still keeps that depth uh, that I want. Okay, so. All right, so I'm happy with this iris. It's got a lot going on. So we've got our pupil there. Pupil's doing well. And then now we're gonna do some eye lights. So the eye lights, Um, are going to be, I'm going to pick a color of brown, of white. And these are really quick and easy to do. I'm just going to pick her, her white there. Again, she's in that blue space. So there's a blue, she's got some kind of a tinted blue light, um, on her. And this, this is highly subjective, this whole part, right? So I just going to, let's see here. But I'm, so I, I'm going to use her light, but I'm going to use this direction. So I'm actually going to. Um, I'm actually going to use a more of a square. And then I'm going to do whatever I kind of see there, which is have it come in like that. So that thing is just, it's just something's just reflecting there. It's probably the light from the, that the photographer is using. And I'm just going to. And the thing is, lights do all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, this is just a subjective kind of situation where, you know, so I can see that the reflection of the photographer is there. So let's just keep that, why not? So that's the shoulder of the photographer, right? Kind of in the reflection there, right? That could be me drawing the picture. So we've got that light, that, that reflective light in there, and then I know that for fun, I can just, I can just add like as if there's another light on the other side, I can just add something, right? I don't know what that is, a window or something, right? It's just, we're just adding that in there. Boom. You know, nobody knows what that is, but it's some kind of additional light that they have in the studio. But now everything just looks reflective all of a sudden. And it's just that easy. 
Uh, all the anime artists know that thing with the, with the reflective light. Um, and then, then the other thing that we can do is these eyelash reflections. So if you, if you really notice in these pics, they have these, now I haven't done these before, so this is going to be my first time and I'm going to, what's, you see there's a light reflecting, but what those, those lines are in the light are actually the eyelashes, right? Because the light's probably slightly overhead and to the right or whatever. And then those eyelashes are actually, you're, you're reflecting and then seeing that light, but through the eyelashes. Because we're looking straight into her eye, the lens of the camera is looking straight into her eye, and then the, the, there's an oval, because that's the eyeball is an oval, and then it's bouncing up, but it's bouncing up through those eyelashes, right? So that's why what we're going to do is we're going to start on eyelashes, and we're going to do eyelash reflections. And for that, we're just going to use the same brush. But we're just going to change the size of it and color of it. And we're going to keep using the same brush for this whole drawing. Because that's what the pros do. That's what I've seen the pros do. So, let's pick. Let's pick a dark color here. And these are eyelash reflections. So, let's... So, they're curving. I just want to think for one second. So, they're curving sort of the opposite way. That's too small, I mean too big. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of curving them. Good. And on here, it's going to be subtle because there's no eye reflection to see it through. So, so that's, that's, for me, for me, this is pretty much enough. And I don't want to go too crazy on this. Because one, I'm not an expert of it. But two, I think, I think we're good. There we go. So those are eyelash reflections on the top. And let me think if there would be, I mean, I, I doubt we would see that many eye reflections because my camera is going like this. There's a light coming from the side, which isn't necessarily going through these bottom eyelashes. So I don't think I see eyelash reflections there. So I think I'm comfortable with this being just on the top. And also, if I look at these other reference, that's where reference comes in. See how she has eyelash reflections showing in the eye? Let's make a few of those like more prominent. So it's clear what it is, because hers are pretty prominent. Yeah, let's just make a couple of these prominent over here. And the brown is not as prominent. And I think that's good. Yeah, I'm good with that. And then Okay, now that we've, let's save. <laughs> At this point, it's just saving a lot because every little detail thing I do that I'm happy with, I just want to save it. And then, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put in eyelashes themselves since we're already on that. And because I have layers, I can always still go and paint underneath. So that's the beauty of the painting thing. So where are my eyelashes themselves going to be? I know I have an eyelash layer somewhere. See, I was supposed to do eyelids on some different layers. I didn't do that. I just kind of forgot that. But that's that's fine. I mean, that's, you know, I, most of the digital painters are not using that many layers. It's just a guideline, right? It's just kind of one of those things where, all right. So, so this one is definitely her mascara, which I'm going to enhance. I'm going to just call that part of the eyelashes layer. And because I'm in this dark color right now, I'm actually just going to enhance that even more just make it darker okay see and that that's literally her mascara that she's adding to enhance it's not even an eyelash it's just you know in this this one here she just drew that in there right 
And then what I'm going to do now, and I'm just going to do it on the same layer because it doesn't matter, is I'm going to uh, start adding in actual eyelashes. So this part is where it's going to be a bit subjective. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to use this bottom reference as my primary because she has the nicest eyelashes. And I'm going to keep the other ones sort of visible so that I can just sort of as a reference. But why I'm going to use hers is because like she's got a good, I always get confused where the eyelashes go to, right? So I don't have to be that exact, right? Because these, these things are subjective, but I do want to match kind of biology, like what biology typically would do. So as you can see, they're curving in at this point and and I'm, I've got a straight on picture. So right here, these eyelashes here are sort of just straight on to the camera, right? And I'm just going to kind of build the structure of these. And then these these here are already starting to curve out. And what I'm doing is sort of I'm doing these little Eiffel Towers, I call them, because when women put on mascara, these eyelashes tend to clump. So they, they stick together because of the mascara, the sticky mascara is, is pulling them together. So one way to kind of get that effect is like, you see how this one's by itself. You can just make that, make another one curve from a different spot. And they are definitely growing out of that lid. So you've got the eyelid and you've got that pinky, pinky area. So as long as you drag it from there and you can you can tend to curl down. Some of them will curl down and some of them. So you're making kind of a layer and just try to follow the correct direction for where you are. I'm trying to follow the correct direction for where I am in the, uh, in the thing. Also, I noticed that they curl under and then up. So some, some of them do and then some of them don't. So I can use those as clumpy ones too. So one can go in here and then clump, clump with the one that's there like that. Right. And then make a few that are just little and curl under and then curl up, curl under, curl up, and then make them clump. And then I don't think I have to go too too ham on this because I think that enough, that will be enough to get the suggestion. So, right, I've got some, I want to clump maybe a few more of these just to make it feel more clumpy, right? Right, so that's that's good. I'm happy with this. I want to make this a little thicker in here. Right, and then especially towards this side where there are more hairs, right? just make those curl under too a bit. Some of them are coming out at us, right? So then some of them won't even really. So there you go. A few that would come at us and not go all the way up like that. Okay. And then now I'm not going to really be adding too many additional hairs, but just add them. I'm looking for them to clump with the other ones. So I think I think I'm done with that top top level to get the idea. <clears throat> so we've got our actual eyelashes and then we've got our reflective ones, right? So on the bottom, they are lighter. So I will make the brush a little smaller. Just two, I'm hitting it too. It just goes in five, so. And first I'm gonna establish the direction. Right. So just got a couple that are just direction establishers. Right. So those hairs are clearly coming out there. And then you do one that's like that. And then let's just go on this side here and just get a few. Right. Just kind of like that. Establish a few that are coming towards us a little bit more. So here in the middle, and then this one's kind of going like that. And then there's one. And, and they, you know, they, they're kind of jagged. They don't all follow the script, right? I'm pretty sure that so too, too many makeup aficionados chagrin these things don't tend to let's go smaller let's just put a few smaller ones really light now i'm just going a little lighter on the all right so that's giving me the idea of some that are under 
And then I want some of these to clump a little bit more and be thicker. So we get the feeling of this variation. Oh, and I just add a few couple of like whatever. It's kind of like my my discretion as to what as to what happens with those. And everybody's an individual, right? So they're not all gonna have the same. Um, I love that I'm in the reflection. <laughs> I think that's so cool. That's me drawing the thing in the reflection. You know, it's like I'm a camera, right? Okay, anyway. Um, all right, and then one thing I'm gonna do now is that I see that I'm gonna vary the color just a bit because, you know, as we know, nothing's ever one color in, in our lives. So see, it's gotten a little bit more brown. I'm gonna stay with the really small brush. I'm just gonna go over some of these major areas and it's like something you can barely see, but the change in color is just gonna add more, I hope it's gonna add more realism to it. I'm gonna do that up here too. Just follow these colors, right? So they're just, I'm just gonna follow the direction. So it's just gonna make it feel like there are a few extra hairs in there that then there are. So that just kind of goes like that. Now uh, I'm gonna make this, see this overlaps, so I can just use that to like fill those in a bit. Right, so those are filled in. Let's fill in the, the growth area from the pink, because there's more coming out of the pink in that lower area there. And then, um, and then the other thing I wanna do is I see some, some sort of highlights, so I'm gonna go light. I'm gonna go, and I, I'm just gonna pick. So what I could do is actually, I'm not gonna do any color picker. I'm just gonna go light, I'm just gonna pick it. I'm just gonna shift from the color that I already know is based on an eye brow, and then just add. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding a few of these here and there, just because I know that, that the eye, you know, like, I, I know that the light is bouncing on there. And, you know, I'm just adding that because, and also I know that this adds to the illusion of depth because every time, everywhere that I have a light one, and I shouldn't have that many, but just like a few, everywhere that I have a light one, it's going to highlight wherever I have a dark one. And it's going to make it hopefully feel a little more 3D. Okay, so I did that. So we've got, you know, and you can see it. I mean, if you if you if you zoom on this this one woman's face here, you if you really look, you can see that there's the feeling of some kind of white stuff, kind of reflective, coming out, and that's because, and even on the top, like look really closely, you can see here, right in there, for example, all right in there, you know. So there there there's reflection from the light which is getting onto the, onto the hairs. And so that, that's what I put that in there for. And, um, and I'm pretty sure I could get more detailed if I wanted to with it. Um, but I think for now, I think that's doing what I wanted to do. Um, and then sometimes, okay, so that's good. So I've got eyelashes. What I could do though, there's one thing I can do, which I think is, I'm gonna make, to make them seem a little thicker, is I'm gonna go with a darker one again, and I'll just pick it, I just press Alt, and just pick it from right in there. I mean, that's like almost towards black at this point. So what I'm gonna do, I'm still on the eyelashes layer, is I am just going to add some black right towards the bottom, where above, see that? I'm not going all the way up into the, the eyelash, but I'm, I'm making, I'm getting, I'm blocking out this pink up here, right? And I'm making this bottom sort of fill in with, with the black because there's so many ha hairs kind of going everywhere. And that just, I feel like that what I'm seeing, if I look at these two pictures, like this picture here and this picture here, and even this picture here, it's, you know, you're, you're kind of, it's kind of blacked out. 
right? It's sort of a black dot situation that uh, where the lid is, where she's put on her mascara. There are a bunch of hairs. She's put on her mascara. It's blacked out. And I'm going to make some of these just kind of jump out a little bit more. Here we go. So I'm happier with that now. And then I'm going to do... I'm going to do a little bit of that, but not much. Just to... And at really all I'm really wanting, and this is just me kind of trying to interpreting what I think I'm seeing, is I just want it to get the feeling that it's coming out of the, these lids, this hair, right? I'm not trying to, and then, and then it thins out as it gets out towards the, towards the, um, whatchamacallit, towards the, um, and then, so as I'm looking at that, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. And I, and I said this wasn't going to get super detailed, but it's actually getting more detailed than I, uh, I really have to learn to, to kind of hold back on that because I do think you learn faster when you do things over and over and over again, like really, really fast. But at the same time, I am happy with how this eye is looking so far, but I see a red area that I need on the skin. So on, let me just, uh, skin one. But let me get the skin two here. Yeah, so skin two is around this eye. I need more red underneath there. Because if you can see right around the edge towards the back, they both have a little bit more red. And, you know, it would just be a little bit darker. So I am going to pick a red from the, the image. I'm just going to click right through that thing hair and all and see what color it gives me so it gives me in the red space it's a little darker i'm going to get a bigger brush by using the right bracket to go to go wider is it doing it yeah and then just it's painting oh shoot ah okay wait let me just control the z that i don't know what i did there but let me click on skin oh it's painting on skin one that's fine that's not hurting anything all right, so let's just paint this on skin too. Right, you see that? Is it doing anything? Do you guys see it changing anything? Wait a minute, skin two. Do I have another layer? That's ah. Uh, so wait, maybe I need to be. Hold on, let me just see. Oh yeah, yeah. So there's skin three. So yeah, if I want it to show up, I need this to be on skin three. So I'm just gonna get like a little more, see a little more of that red. Um, and I want it to be a little redder than that. So let's go a little redder and go a little lighter. Let's go a little redder on it. There we go. See what I wanted there? So I just want that like, kind of that red feel that, that, that they both got under there. You know, just that red, it's that red that's coming through from the, from the subsurface of the skin. Cause you know, it, there's a lot of blood and stuff going on. So it's always going to have that blush look to it. And, uh, okay. And then let me blend this a little bit with a bigger brush, you know, so I see you just blend that a little bit. So it's like blends in so that's that's the blending blending is fun um trying to see what other stuff i see all right so i, I i'm close to finishing on this one because like i said i wasn't gonna want to go like like too too crazy crazy deep with this but but the couple last little few details that i am gonna work on are gonna have to do with the little um the little area of uh fleshy skin inside the this pupil area or not pupil area, but um, in this tear duct area, because I want that to be, it's got some reflections in there and I want to capture those. Um, and I want to vary the, the colors a little bit because it's just a little bit less defined than the rest of the painting right now. Um, so I am going to be on this skin. Let's see which layer, there's a skin four. Yeah. So skin four is where my, where my duct is. So I'm going to get onto that layer and, um, I'm going to get my brush to be much, much, much smaller. Right. 
and I'm just using the bracket keys. It's much easier to do it that way. I'm going to pick this red, which I'm calling it a red. It's probably not a red. It's more of a pinkish orange. And I'm going to draw that, that, that little definition thing in there. I'm going to go even smaller. I'm going to go a little bit darker just manually. Nothing wrong with going and change the color slightly. Right. And just see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get the edge because I see that she has more of an edged kind of situation going on with that. And then just curve it around. Right. And then I'm going to color mix. I'll color pick right there and blend that because it just ends right there. I like that. That blend is fine. And I'm going to blend this away too. Right. So we just kind of curved into that thing, which is fine. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And then there's a darker area in here, which I want to represent. So let's get in there and get that color. See how dark that is? All right, let's get that represented. See, that kind of goes up into there with that dark color. And then here's where it sort of curves around. That's where it, it does that thing. Right, so that makes more sense there. And then let's get our fleshy pink back. Let's get our fleshy pink to still be in this area a bit more. Good, just change the color again. Right, so changing color. Like the amount that I'm changing color is probably not even enough. Like I think I've been seeing on speed paints that I've seen, they're like changing color like all the time, right? It's just like, it's like a marathon of color changing. And then let's get, let's get a little bit of a lighter fleshy pink in there. All right, so we're just defining, right? We're just defining this. And that's getting like more, showing that it's more, just build up that fleshy area here. And then color pick, get the dark area back in, right? And then get the, Okay, so I think I think I'm fine with how that's that's kind of looking there. Okay. I think I'm fine with that how that's looking. And then let's get a little bit darker one and then on a bigger brush and then just bigger brush. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, just just to yeah, blend that kind of in a little bit better. Good. Okay, so that that's kind of giving that, that bit of a fleshy kind of look to it and showing that definition of where it um, blend. Keep on the big brush. Good. Okay, so there we go. So that looks more defined as a structure. Um, and there's a, there's a kind of a, see, this is where the white is. I want to get that color and I want to get that on a bigger brush. There we go. So there, there you kind of get the feel of let's blend. Let's blend this right here. Let's get this bigger. Yeah. Like that. So there you kind of get that feel. Let's just, and then let's, so here just, we, we lost a little of the definition. And then just reduce the brush and then just make sure that that stays kind of uh, defined. Go dark color. Go dark color. Yeah. Okay. So I'm good with that. And then I'm going to just going to color pick that again. And go a little bit bigger. And then just kind of good. So, so I'm fine with that. And then I'm going to use that little shadowing thing over here too, because I think that works for this kind of area. I don't know what's going on there. I should have done that. I should have done all of that. But it's just. I probably could address this. I'm trying to figure out what layer is creating that shadow it's probably one of these skin layers oh yeah so this skin layer here is having stuff inside the eye that shouldn't be there all 
And then there's another, let's see. There's probably the original skin layer that's overlapping in there somewhere. So just do a little clean up here, let's see. Nope, it's not there. Eye white, nope. So what is creating that? So there is definitely a layer that's creating this little thing here, which isn't really supposed to be there. So I'm just gonna kind of find out what the offending down just a little bit okay skin to I'm not really sure which layer is doing that there it is skin foe what are you doing skin foe oh let's let's get right on the skin foe there we go oh yeah so skin force there we go So just cleaning that just a little bit on skin four. That's fine. And then I think I still have my color selected. Yeah, so I can just kind of kind of just work that in there so it still stays like fleshy. And then Alright, and then the last thing I needed, which is on yeah, the skin four layer which we're working on, are these highlights. So the highlights are supposed to make it look watery. And I think I can just choose the color that I'm in and just go to almost white on it. It's a little bit less than white. And let's just get much smaller. Notice we've used the same brush the whole time. So that's the one thing I did notice is that, you know, artists are using the same brush for this painting thing. It's just that they get the right brush. Let's go smaller. Let's go super small. Right, so what we're doing here is we're just adding in some highlights to make this look like it's like wet, you know? So let's see, let's see if I like that. So what I think I can do though, is I can actually simplify this structure a little bit because really what there is, is like, there's the meaty structure here and then there's the meaty in there. So I've got the meaty part in there, but I think what I need to do is uh, get rid of this shadow. I don't need that shadow there, right? So this is, this is my inside part. So what I'm gonna do then is just put in some pink again, and then let my highlights kind of do the rest of that. There we go. There we go. There we go. Right. So there, that, that's kind of like a more defined situation. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to, I'll go back to that highlight. I'll go even smaller. And then I'll just add in right, an actual like, bam, couple of lines there that just, cause this is, it just happens to be the shape wherever the light, which is coming from, our right side is on is landing on there that's making this happen and so all that's doing is giving me the idea that this is sort of a a bit of a bit of a wet structure right i don't do much undo but i'm going to undo that last uh yeah i'm just doing undoing that last one there and i think i'm happy with that you know so that made it look wet and i'm fine with that so
<laughs> all right so like i'm overworking this now but i am going to because i'm already in it so what i'm gonna do is go back to where we were make the brush a little bigger again kind of go over some of this so they have less right so i want the high highlight to be more specific and i'm going to get a slightly lighter shade of pink to go right there to make that part be like more towards us like it's a little bit more like thick right and then i'm going to stick that highlight pretty much like right on there oh make it super small though Let's go left on the brush to get small. Right, I'm clearly overworking this. I mean, this is this is just for you. This is going to be just a style question. I mean, it's just how much you want to you want to work this thing. Um, You know, this is totally not necessary at this point. So let's just, right, so that that's it. I just wanna have this one cool highlight though. I'm obsessing about this highlight. Yeah, and then I'll make it super light, I mean super small. Super small so I can get it to focus, the focus highlight. Yeah, I think I'm fine with that. All right, I'm stopping. All right, so that that's pretty much it. I mean, the goal here was, I mean, this took longer than I was expecting to focus on it, but the goal here was to paint a convincing eye. Um, I feel like I probably went a little further on the detail that I wanted to for this um, kind of tutorial, but at the same time, um, I feel like we did cover all the aspects of the workflow. And then essentially all you would do is based on knowing those steps, and following those is you would just you would just keep looking at your reference and keep adjusting your eye and the beauty is is because the thing that we can do in photoshop that we can't do on a canvas or on paper is we have layers so the fact that i've separated all of this into layers it allows us a lot of flexibility a lot of freedom to keep on tweaking it to our heart's content um because, you know, as you see, you can just, you know, see that's a huge, that layer made a huge difference. The skin four layer right there. Uh, you know, that layer there for the shadows around with the nice and red. I like how we got the red in there. Um, the skin three layer was working with that as a kind of a background layer. The skin two layer, uh, you know, kind of gave the form around that. If we wanted to spend more time, we would spend more time blending that is what we would do. Um, and then going on down. So now what we could have done, we could have added a few more shadows. So there's a shadow layer. Um, if I wanted to add a shadow, let me show you that real quick. Um, just what it is that it's, it's really not like overkill. I mean, it's not over, um, it's not that complicated. So you would go with like a big brush. I'll make my brush pretty, pretty big on this layer right here. Yeah, nice and big. And then because it's a, and I would make the shadows go, oh no, these are eyeball shadows, hold on. Yeah, so like I, if I wanted, I could just put like some shadows there on the eyeball to like accentuate the depth. And then I would need to have a brush that reflects that. So uh, you should always have the brush also on the, on the same brush that you're using. So if you wanna, if you wanted to erase, then you would be erasing with a brush that kind of functions the same. Yeah, so I could do that if I wanted to. I'll just go like that. Yeah, there we go. That was pretty good. So you see there, see the eyeball now? We've got some, those are the eyeball shadows to add more depth to the eyeball itself. And then I have another layer for shadows, which is my eye overall shadow. And that's where I would go and it's above, notice it's above all the other layers. So I could go over this thing 
and uh, maybe go. Let me think here. Would I go red? Let's we can go yellow, more yellowish. Go yellowish on it, and then just give it a. Because, what is this shadow layer doing? It's more so, kind of like it's a shadow coming from the lighting source. So, oh, it's not doing anything because it's on the race. Got it. So. So, so I know that looks weird right at first, but if you just, so then take it, let's take it back. Um, so I don't like that color, so let's just go back here. So there, what I could do then is just use that layer to, so it looks, it's hard to tell what it's doing, but probably should make it a little thinner. I'm gonna make a little thinner of a brush and so it's a little more focused. Um, so let's just erase it. Right. So we're just gonna erase that and we're just gonna kind of go with that thinner brush. Crap, I don't like that. I don't like that color, I think it's really like that. And just go a little thinner. So this is just adding the idea of some shadow that would be coming from coming over over the eyeball and through this thing so that it's not as oh yeah, I like that much better. Okay, see, so you're getting the, you know, the overall eyelashes are creating a kind of a shadow, right? So you can kind of see so you add that in there and it's showing you that. You know, there's a, there's a general shadow that's coming from stuff, which just makes it look a little bit. That's more for a, that's more of a lighting kind of thing, right? So so this this clean version of this eye versus versus that is it's a huge difference, um, and everything's in there that you put in there, but it's just it lo it looks a little bit more. It's natural that the eye has a bit of a shadow coming from the eyelid and the eyelashes above. So that's what that's for. And then like if I wanted to put a little in here because the light's coming from there, I could do that. Just be really careful about it. Don't make it too sharp. There we go. So it's just like that. It's just a slight, it's the idea that the light's coming from that side. So there would be a bit of a shadow there. And then if I wanted to also say like, um, so this eye, the light's coming from the right. So then if I wanted to, I could just add a shadow on the left of the whole eye. Right, so that's just a that's just a lighting thing, because see, I'm adding in I'm adding in the shadows of the light, which are, tend to be a little more realistic, and I could kind of play with that and make it be not as aggressive. So just do that. See, and then if I wanted to let my reflection come through more, I could erase just in the spot where the reflection is. So that's what that that's what that eye shadow I like that, and then uh, that's what that's for, and then yeah. So then you would just yeah you would work and work with all those things. But that's pretty much it. I think I'm gonna stop this one here, um, and that's also the advantage. I was just explaining the advantage of the layers and the fact that you're able to like you know go back, tweak things, take things away. You know, you can go straight to your iris layer and it's there. You don't even have to remove your sketch because if you put your sketches in the right place, you cover them up completely with the paint. You know, if I turn off this sketch right now, it's really not gonna make much of a difference, but it's nice to leave it in there because I can actually see a tiny bit of places where it might creep through. And, and sometimes it's nice to just let that creep through come in. Um, it's not hurting the overall image. But anyway, that's it for the eye. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you if you didn't know where this was coming from, start off with part one, which is just a sketch. It's a much quicker video. It shows you how to get all the things in position. And then on this one, if you noticed, because of the sketch, we didn't have to go searching for where stuff was because we already knew where everything was because of the sketch. So we could just focus on things like blending, color picking, uh, you know, what layers we're going to put the things on, and then really just rendering that. So um, I hope you enjoyed this and. 
Um, I make videos every single day, day here at Dan Donju Art. Do make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, comment, all that stuff helps. You know, you don't have to give any money, but if you just give your participation, that helps build the community. And um, it definitely gives me a lot of encouragement to keep making these videos every single day. Come back here, there'll be a new video every single day. So I'm um, glad you were here and I'll see you tomorrow.